Welcome to another test and teardown video. It's another Boiler and Kia. Measuring amplifier type 2609. So this one covers the entire audio range 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. As far as I can see, this is the input, right? And then you can, of course, select voltage or millivolts and from 0 0.1 millivolts. How about that? All the way to 30 volts. And you can you can change the filtering. So it's a an A A weight uh, filter. I think this is something to do with the with the width of the the bandwidth, right? And there's an an in Build in a reference, 50 millivolt reference. I think this is for calibration. We're going to look into that. Fast and slow. Okay, so far so good. And that will be the input 2 mega ohms. That is a little bit weird. Why is it 2 mega ohms? Hmm. That is a little bit weird. I just been through a um, nice, nice cleanup. So now, now it's just, it is nice and shiny. Let's look a little bit on the back. See, that connector here is the famous Boylan Care microphone preamp. So, so you can uh, use this for their microphone line or their uh, measuring microphones and all that kind of stuff. They use this special, special connector. So, I mean, there is an input. Uh, for this here, so there's a, an interface with power supply and everything inside this one for that. AC output. And we got DC output. Right here, right? So, I think we should try and power this up and see what happens. And I forgot to say thank you very much, uh, Falstalud for once again providing a constant flow of cool instruments I can play with. I love it. See you soon again, mate. So let's try and power this up. I got mains input and nothing bad happened. And here we go. Nine, seven, six watts. I Yes, it is a live. I was expecting some really nice and shiny lights, but I don't see any light up here. In this wire, I got one volt RMS, one kilohertz. And if I am not mistaking, that's three, that's one. Look at that. And that's one. I mean, it's very, very accurate. Let's. Ooh, look at that. Nice and slow. So, okay. So far, so good. First in impression here is uh, good. It seems to be alive. And it's not full of weird loose connections. No. I want to try and play with the different ranges in a second. Well, look at that. So that is millivolt, one millivolt RMS input. And now you see the meter is a little bit noisy. I'll try to give it a lot less. Let's see what I can do. Really? I can only do 0.7 millivolt RMS. And that is actually also on the meter. And that is the noise floor, or I mean, the, the minimum output my signal generator can give. Well, well, I could, of course, attenuate and all that kind of stuff. But I think, I think we are quite happy uh, so far. I mean, this thing kind of works, so it's uh, teardown time. So let's look a little bit more on the inside of this beautiful unit i did feel those switches are like really really hard to push 
and that is now explained by the length so they are really long those two switches and see it's nicely shielded and they're also using shielded cables so this is the calibration i guess sensitivity i would expect this to be a fine calibration or something like that it's full of op amps and high precision resistors so all that is really good i am a little bit worried about all those tantalium capacitors because i just always feel bad things when i play around in old stuff but if you use them in a low current um, circuit where you don't have any voltage spikes or current spikes or rms current or anything like that it is actually a very good capacitor and they will last many many years under the correct usage what we see here is three philips set set 1000 and that is a classic miniature voltage regulator tube so uh, it's for uh, 81 volts uh, 3 milliamps and they are in series sort of with some resistors as well so um, they're driving a very high voltage to uh, the condenser microphone circuits used in some of the uh, 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 microphones so they're actually running off 240 volts and something like that and if you look here it says 200 volts we got three times 81 so that's 240 and then probably some voltage dividers and some biasing circuits and stuff like that i was just wondering if this soldering is okay it looks a little bit spooky but i'll have to dig into that a little bit more we got a little bit of uh, points here for different uh, voltages but I'm not going to measure around in this unit because it really works and everything is just perfect I like the way that they connect to this point like that this is a good good design style it's probably a voltage yes it is a voltage regulator another funny shield here as well that looks a little bit weird so that will be uh, let's see if I can get a little bit of light yes a voltage regulator rectifier diodes tons of power supply parts and op amps and stuff for power supply here in the back it's beautiful design oh yeah look at that is some old style transistors those oi, oi, oi. 115d those are rare high quality ultra low leak no it's not it's actually resistors i thought it was capacitors because they can also look like this if they're really really fancy smancy types but that will just be resistors and again it's really full of high quality components yeah and it's from 1975 let's see if i can find any other 75 75 yes on all date codes and see the the last winding here is 150 0 and 150 so that is the high voltage they regulate down to 200 dc and that's of course all the input voltages perfectly fine by the way this unit uses about five watts so it's not using a lot at the quality of those connectors and everything here is just tip top goody goody stuff hmm. 
<laughs> that is the fast or slow. So it's actually just a capacitor they put on the on the meter. Wouldn't it be like that, right? And by the way, we were missing some light. Somebody scored one of the bulbs. It's a little bit special, the diameter of those bulbs. So obviously somebody took the broken bulb out and was trying to figure out where to get a new one and failed, just like I would do, because it's impossible to find those because they're a 6.3 millimeter diameter. And that is not easy to find with the pointy ends as well. And if I'm not wrong, I think they're 6.3 volts each and they're in series here on 12 volts. Because if you look here, we got 12 volts uh, windings. I thought I was done with the video, but I just ended up playing a little bit more with the bulbs. Yeah, we got 13 and a half volts AC on this point and it's fairly easy to release those two screws and then you can access the bulbs. One is missing and the other one is also broken and it's actually written here six point eight volts. Well you can even see the filament is yeah, six point eight. That is some something, huh? So I had the idea I could actually put in some white LEDs up here and make it shine real nice. But I also wanted to show you how to clean this. Just lift this up. Isn't that cute? So we are back, it is now full of light. I tried to uh, point the LEDs where the light normally came from with the normal bulbs, because if I spread the light too much, it will look like four dots. I put in four, let me turn this off. I put in four white LEDs like that. And of course this is AC. So that is not good uh, with LEDs if they're going to blink real bad. So what I did is I put in a diode and a capacitor. Now I got a nice constant voltage. And then I could just set up the LEDs like this. If you prefer a more warm uh, light or you want to put more or less or whatever you want to do here, you've got plenty of uh, options. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward uh, modification here. Ay, ay, ay. As always, I thought I was done playing around with this. And what do you know? This is another one. <laughs> exactly the same. And I thought, hey, the other one works so fantastically good. So maybe this one is going to work as well. This one don't work. And it's really weird what happens. It's the, the millivolts, all the ranges of millivolt, that's, those are dead. And all the ranges of volts, no matter what, is just full hammer out. So what the heck is going on here? And there's just no response on input. So I mean, front end completely hammered in this one. But we got the most wanted bulbs. They are both working. Yubi yay. And look at the PCP design here. It's completely different. I mean, this entire area here, we have just seen. Look at the differences. All this is completely redesigned. And the PCB also look very much different. This is of course a more modern version because you can see we got silk screen and all the nice stuff on this one. Still the 200 walls and all that goody goody stuff. And they 
still root from the same point down here. So that is still very good and very important. I see a little bit of mods performed here. Let's look from the other side. I expect the input circuitry here and the it's probably here somewhere we will find the the problem. And there's an LMT what is that? A three ten, yeah. So that's probably four op amps, right? Hmm. We got some diodes. Yeah, that's going to be interesting to see where the problem is in this one. So that was a great success. That was not that difficult as I expected. I don't have any schematics for these uh, Portland Care units and they're just, just impossible to, um, to get. But I actually managed to figure this out. So the input goes via a buffer. So this one is just buffering. Oh, let me get some light here. That one is just buffering the input. And so there's no voltage gain. And, and that was looking really, really weird uh, on its uh, output and its inputs. And everything was just crazy here. So I thought, hey, let's desolder this one. And uh, since there's no gain in this one, I could just uh, short the input and the output when I removed the IC. And then I could just proceed figuring out uh, what's going on. And then again, really weird DC uh, levels and everything was uh, really crazy. Um, Self oscillations and all sorts of stuff. And then that op amp is, uh, is the next stage. And it's also connected to the different uh, uh, input ranges and all that kind of stuff, right? But anyway, the, that one was defect. So I put in a socket, of course, and a new one. And uh, now the instrument started to work. So I could put the so uh, a socket in and the original e IC uh, back in here in the first stage. And now uh, everything is uh, good and uh, fantastic. <laughs> that was great. And here is my one volt RMS input. And I am in three volt range. And I mean, that's quite all right. Let's try one volt range and it's here. So there's also uh, another feature I forgot to uh, show you guys uh, about this instrument. That is the 50 millivolt reference. So there's a built-in generator and in it's actually connected directly to the input stage when you do this. So all you have to do is click this, is my 100 millivolt full range. And there's actually a little, um, let me turn off the light here. There's actually a little indication here, it says ref. So this is where you need to uh, have the, the needle. Uh, I mean, it's almost there, right? So there's probably a, a part here where I can fix that uh, little detail if I really want to but hey I'm happy this one is now working and as you can see here this one is with the original bulbs the absolutely impossible to find and impossible to buy anywhere because of the the diameter is uh, really uh, only 6.3 millimeters and they got this uh, pointy end. In this particular unit, they don't really need the pointy end, but in many other products, they actually sit at the pointy end. So it's the same uh, bulb they, they kind of use. Uh, 